there's a lot of things going on on this Easter. And there are a lot of things that I've been talking about for the past couple of years that bring us to this apex moment. I've been talking about everything is being brought to light and that we will see things that will make us afraid at first. But then when we connect with that divine source within us, it transmutes itself to understanding and knowing. And I'd like to talk about that today on this special day, Easter. And I think it's very appropriate to talk about it today because Jesus talked about these very same things about transmuting fear into forgiveness and transmuting judgment into understanding and love. And I'd like to pick that apart. And as I'm picking it apart, you'll probably notice that I'm going to be talking about the metaphysical and secret teachings of Christ, of the Christ. And so I'd like to start with, you know, I grew up in the Methodist church and I was little and I would be squirmy. I would be in the pew and my, my mother and my grandmother, they all went to the same church. It was a family church, but I left not understanding what the teaching was. It wasn't really touching my heart. It wasn't connecting with me. And so growing up in that kind of atmosphere, I tried to understand, but it wasn't until I had a personal experience with the divine within me that it all started to click and make sense. So I started out really with a hatred. I know that's a strong word, but I had a hatred towards my father. So whenever Jesus or I would hear somebody talking about the father and I are one, I'm, I associated it with my paternal father who was an alcoholic and was abusive. So I could not connect in that way. I could not understand that deep love that he was talking about because the human version of that was not love to me. And so I didn't have that connection. And then I started to have problems in my life and I did not connect it with hatred that had a root with my father. So I had a hatred towards my boss. I had a hatred towards men in general. And then because God has a sense of humor, he gave me a son that I birthed a son, which is a male child. So I needed to work on some stuff. Yeah. And the universe was telling me I needed to work on some stuff. But I was still oblivious. Because I traveled hundreds of miles away from my father and didn't have any access to him, I thought that I forgave him. You know, I don't have any malice toward him. I don't even think about him. I'm pretty sure I've forgiven him. So stop talking about forgiveness. But I was still having problems in my life. I was having such problems at work that it was a pain to go to work. I mean, physical pain and emotional pain to go to work. I was fighting with my male boss. I thought he was a moron at the time. And I'm driving in my car one day and I I guess you could say blacked out because I'm on the freeway in automatic pilot and what came in my vision scope was Jesus. And there was just this love. And the next thing I remember, I'm in the parking lot of my job crying. What had happened was, is that Jesus showed me my dad whom I hadn't talked with, whom I hadn't seen. He's in Kansas City, I'm in Las Vegas. But he's showing me, and I have a vibrational feeling of my dad and love towards this man. Just an envelope of love. I was comforted and a blanket full of love is what I can describe it as. And so God was showing me how much he loved my dad. From the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, he loved every part of him. And I remember 
thinking that the alcoholism, the in left field thinking, he just loved him. Not as a perfect man, but just the way he was presenting, he just had a love for him. And what I realized was that he had a love for my boss. He had a love for me. Holding on to all this hatred for so many years, having that spew out of my mouth and out of my actions, he loved me without any judgment or shame or guilt. I used to talk about my boss behind his back and try to sabotage his career. No, I was manipulative. I was haughty. I thought I knew better than he who had been at that job for 20 years and I just got there. I saw that in me, but I also felt love at the same time. So that is what this God presence, that is what Jesus was talking about. When he was talking about love, that spirit came through him and talked about loving people that you don't necessarily like. Now that sounds crazy. And by the same token, when you begin to love them, you begin to see all of the stuff that you do as well, that you think is unlovable. And it's transmuted into understanding and pure comfort and love. And so in that comfort, you're able to change your ways. So Jesus talked about this. When I went to Jerusalem, they talked about Jesus walked this path and his hand touched there. And if you've ever been to Jerusalem, you go on these tours and they tell you over there is where we think the Last Supper was. And over there, we think that he carried the cross to the, 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 the place where they crucified him. And I went there and I was trying to get a sense of Jesus just by where he walked. But that's not where you get a sense of Jesus. You get a sense of Jesus when people record it, especially in the Gnostic Gospels and the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Mary, the ones that maybe didn't make it to the final version of the Bible. But he talked about love, but he talked about connecting to the source within you, to the God within you. And he called it the Father and I are one. I don't say the Father and I are one. I say I am one with the Father. But we're speaking the same language. People back in those times saw God as the Father. And I would imagine that he had a very close relationship with his Father. And so that love energy, he just said it in a way that people could understand it. But he was still called blasphemous because he was saying that he was the love. And what he was saying is that love energy comes through you, expresses as you, and what comes out of your mouth sometimes is in the first person. So when I started to see my boss in a different way, in a loving way, I spoke to him differently. My actions changed. And so I wasn't that personality that was manipulative anymore. I had died to that. I had killed that other personality. Did I do it? I went within and I connected to a spirit of love that loves everybody. So I couldn't talk about my boss behind my back, his back. 
I couldn't criticize other people because that's a lower frequency. That's a lower energy. And it is not a part of the higher frequency of God. So I was not the same person that I was when I was a teenager and hated my dad's guts. I was not that person anymore. I was not the same person that saw things the same way. But when I noticed that when I connected with the world, when I started to believe worldly things, like that person is not as valuable as that person, when I started to see the news and associate with people that were not familiar with that spirit, I noticed that I could, if I allowed myself, to go right back to that thinking. And I, I didn't want to do that anymore. So I knew that I needed to have a practice where I always was connecting with that divine spirit. And Jesus talked about that. But he also talked about behavior. And he gave a really great story because he talked in parables. He talked in stories. He was a storyteller because that's how people learn. And when I'm looking at this pandemic and I look at the way people's consciousness has been follied about because it started in China. So we say, oh, those are Chinese people. It's not us. It's not, you know, that has nothing to do with us. Then it goes to Italy. It says, well, you know, those Italians, whatever your view of Italians are. Well, that's in Europe. It's not going to come here. And then it comes here. And we find out that it's killing black and brown people because we find out, oh, it's an old people's disease. And the young people say, well, it's not me. And then it's black and brown people. And we say, well, nobody cares because we can always marginalize it, that it's not us. And that's not the God space. That's not what Jesus taught. He talked about the Samaritan. And he picked out all the people that people didn't like. He said a Levite came. He said another person came. So just put it this way. It was a homosexual on the ground, dying and bleeding. And there was a priest that walked by and said, well, he's a homosexual. It's a big, black, scary black man on the ground bleeding. And a priest walks by, or a pastor walks by, or somebody that has been to church for 30 years and says, well, that man has no value. This pandemic is showing us how far away we are from the Christ consciousness that Paul said in the Bible. If you only had the mind of Christ, oh, the world would be so much better. That God space where everybody has value because everybody is part of the one. There is no one that has less value or more value. And it takes a pandemic. It takes this to show how far away we are from the God consciousness, the Christ consciousness. And yes, Jesus came to show us the way. He said, the way I think is the way, the truth, and the light. And nobody goes to the Father, to God, without going through that spiritual understanding, that awareness that comes from knowing who you are 
I am part of the God. I am part of the one. And that person that is dying that doesn't look anything like me is also me. And so he told the story of the Good Samaritan, who the Samaritan was not like the person on the ground. But he took care of him. He not only tended to his wounds there, but he took him on his donkey and took him to a hotel and paid the person money. Take care of him, and when you, I get back, I'll give you more money to take care of him. He didn't know that man. Everything in the world would say that that man has less value, but he wasn't listening to the world. He was listening to a higher form of consciousness that says that's me on the ground. And because you value the God within you and God is experiencing life, that's why we're here. We're here to experience life as God. What would God do? We would be aware. Be aware of suffering. Be aware of healing. Be aware of love. What's happening now is showing us how far away we are from Christ's consciousness. And it is a time to understand. That we need to connect. Individually need to connect with that. Let's take a deep breath. When I had the experience that I had on the freeway where I began to connect with, because I needed a supernatural healing, I was just oblivious to me. So when I had that supernatural experience and I connected with that love that is for my dad, who keep in mind, that was the person that I put as the most hated person in my life. When I put him there in my arms, in my heart, and I began to love him, something in me died. But also something in me was rebirthed. So there was destruction and there was creation all at the same time. We are experiencing that now. Something is dying, no question. Systems are dying. The economy is dying. What we worship is dying in material things. But there's also something that is being birthed. And this is nothing to be afraid of because sometimes when you have to create something new, you have to destroy something that gave comfort and that people didn't want to get rid of and people didn't know how to get rid of it, that it had no value. But now, we have the opportunity to connect with that divine source and create from that place of knowing, from that place of love in the heart. And so even though things are collapsing or imploding, there is also something going to rise from the phoenix. But it's up to us going from that place of oneness to create from there. In other words, what does God want in this world? What does the rebirth of Christ, the resurrection, what does that mean 
to you? Does it mean more love, more loving in our actions, less judgment, less value driven? That person is more valuable than that person. We don't want that anymore. We want to come from a loving, inclusive, united front. Because only this, something like this, could unite us. Think about it. Only something like this can show us how far away we are from the secret teachings of Christ. It's also very promising. It is a wonderful thing to think that I can have the mind of Christ. People think that Jesus Christ, that was his last name. No, the Christ means oneness with God. It can be Carmen the Christ, Jeannie the Christ, Russ the Christ. Can we say that that is where my mind and my thoughts and my words are from? Because this is showing us, obviously, that we're still polarized and that we need to have a oneness, a coming together, a union of thought. Um, I'd like to play a song that kind of signifies this. Take a deep breath. All right, guys, so let's, let's settle down some. We need you to sing this song with us. Listen up, listen up. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time. With no point of rest, to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. And the vapor of your breath
One of the lyrics to that song was, you're the one who never leaves the one behind. You're the one, the one spirit, the one presence, the one divine entity within each and every one of us doesn't leave 
the one behind. We're not disconnected in that space. It's, it, that's why it's like, be the one. Be the one entity, the one presence. When I talk, it's God talking. When I'm doing something, it's God doing something. When there's chaos, I'm God experiencing that. I'm God looking at that. I'm God reacting to that, responding to that. Not from the ego, not from the human thing. That has to die. And that body, that physical body dies. But what never dies is the creative source that isn't everything. That never dies. So that spirit is everlasting life. So when we talk about the resurrection, it is every time I have to die to my ego, that has to die. Me, me, this is about me. What do I get out of it? That has to die. God is about, you are me. That is me over there. If I'm suffering over there, can I relieve the suffering? What can I do? Can I be aware of it? Can I send my energy there quantumly? This is, this is quite a time we're living in. We chose to be here during this time. Why? To be the light. To be that spirit made flesh. Now, in this time, so that there is no separation. We're here with all these polarizations to bring unity to it. That's what this is all about. Bringing unity to something that thinks it's separate. So I die every time I have separate polarized thinking. The world does that. I'm here to bring it light. I'm here to shine a light on it. I am the way, the truth, and the light. And whoever comes through that spiritual energy that I'm talking from is the one is the one. And if I know who I am, and I am the one, then I definitely see who you are. That day in my car, I was loving my dad. I was loving my boss, whereas just the day before it was the opposite. But I had connected with the Christ consciousness and I began to vibrate with that love of God and it was God experiencing my dad. It was God experiencing my boss. And I was one, I was the one looking at itself. I was the one experiencing itself. So when you're in this world that we chose to be in, don't react like the world. Don't see it through the lens of a human. Christ was talking about, people kept saying, are you going to take over the Romans? Are you going to, is this your kingdom? He's like, no, my kingdom <laughs> is within me. It's within you.
And he talked about his body. He said, it is the temple of the living God. It is the temple of the living God. And so we built temples, actual brick and mortar temples, thinking that that was going to represent God. These are the secret teachings. And when I went to Jerusalem and people are praying to the wall, and it says that the temple will be rebuilt and then the Messiah will come. And people think that's the end of the world. The end of the world is when you go within your temple and the Messiah, the Savior, that saves you from yourself. You find that spirit within you. That is the end of that world. That is the end of the ego when we stop manipulating and start stop seeing value in one person and not in the other. That is when we see value in everything because we are the one and the world that we're used to living in is dead and buried. And we rise up with our true self, with our true nature, and we start creating a world from the base of God. So when we build up that temple within us, the Messiah will come through us, as us, and the old world will die because it can no longer stand. It's a lower vibrational energy. We don't need it anymore. We will have transcended that. That's one of the reasons why it is the most exciting time and it is the most tragic time at the same time. Let's take a deep breath. Yesterday, my son and I went to the strip because we found out that the Thunderbirds were going to be flying over Las Vegas. And it was very exciting. So people were out, we were keeping our distance. And my son had on his cell phone when they were going to take off and when they were going to start coming around the city. And so there were families out, there were people in their pickups, they were trying to get a good spot of seeing the Thunderbirds flying out of Nellis Air Force Base. And so we, we got a good spot. And then my son says, there they are, do you see them? And we looked over to the mountains and you could see the, the white smoke coming out and they were in formation. And then there were other people saying, where, where, where is it? And then we said, over at the mountains, do you see it? And I got weepy. And I was like, why am I weeping? Why is this such an emotional time? And I said, because people are so excited in the midst of chaos. They want good news. They want something good to look forward to. But I also knew as I was looking at the Thunderbirds and it was fabulous. I said to myself, this, is, this feeling is familiar. I find hope every time I'm connected to the one. There's a joy and a bliss and a peace that I can't explain. But yesterday, when I pointed and showed everybody the Thunderbirds and they were happy, I was just like, there's a place inside you that you can get that too. And it's not on the news. And it's probably not talking to your neighbor or your family. But there's a source within us that is so loving and so connected to everything. 
and it just wants us to look and see that it's there. And it's there for everybody, everybody, no matter who you are, no matter what you have, it's there for everybody. And it's the one that never leaves the one behind. Let's take a deep breath. And let's close our eyes. Let's get centered to knowing who we are. Within us is the kingdom of heaven. It's not somewhere where you eventually go. It's somewhere that you can go now. And there's a joy and there's a bliss there in the midst of chaos. I'm just so grateful that Jesus gave us those teachings and symbolized that we can die to ourselves, you know, our manipulative, our ego self, and we can rise in a knowing that we're all connected. We all have value. And we are so loved because we are love itself. All of that is within us. Let's take a deep breath again. I am grateful. I am grateful for everything that I can see, but mostly I'm grateful for everything that is unseen and unmanifested at this time. So I'm grateful for a vaccine. I am grateful for the unifying force that this has presented on earth. I am grateful that I am one. I am grateful that we have the opportunity to be with each other. I am grateful to be on this planet at this particular time to experience a resurrection, to create and envision what that looks like. Take a deep breath. I affirm health and healing. And I affirm the connection with the presence that is never absent. I affirm that it is in within each and every one of us. I affirm the love that is always there. The calmness, the peace that passes all understanding. I let it be so and we all say and so, so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Mm.